Welcome to Diaspora Lounge. Thank you for joining us on this episode. We are talking about sibling rivalry, estrangement, and other problems arising between siblings, among siblings. Some pe people are divided on this, on um, the issue of sibling rivalry, because some people feel that because it's, because it's a sibling, there is nothing that should, sorry, allow me to adjust this. There's nothing that should come between siblings. And so no matter what this, no matter what our sibling is doing, we should find a way to be able to manage that relationship. And some people feel that there's, um, there's a line somewhere. And just because it's a sibling doesn't mean that we have to continually manage the difficulties. So let's have a discussion here and see how we handle this thinking about our culture and our, and our upbringing and the ideas that, we, that are imbibed um, as we go. There's Pastor Solomon, Pastor Solomon Aro, there is Coco, and there is Ajiri, who you guys are already used to. So let's start with um, Ajiri. Ajiri. <laughs> <laughs> what is your <laughs> I, I, I would love that to start first. Um, yes. Um, um, you could say... Um, it's it's you know why you sent me the topic i said it's it's raw it's deep and it's going to open wounds you know mm -hmm. and it just took me back um my own family my mom my late mom you know um you know growing up and i'll start from here because there are consequences i'm starting from the end the consequences of sibling rivalry and how I and my cousins do not have a relationship today. We were so close growing up. And I hope they will see this and see my pain. We were so close growing up. But I cannot fathom what happened with my, between my late mom and one of her late brothers who is late now and her other brother. As in, it just, things just kapushed to the point that when we were burying my late mom, there were two divided camps. Her two immediate younger siblings did not come for her funeral to tell you that even in death, there was bad blood. Now, you think it ends with you and your siblings. As I speak, you just know you have cousins. You stumble into them in Facebook, on Facebook. You stumble onto them in Instagram and different things. But there is no relationship. Why? Because of the seeds, the bad seeds that the elders sowed. Because of the bad seeds. And now, I mean, I had to write to my uncle, who is now the head of my mother's family. Her brother is still surviving. This someone that when I was in Abuloma in secondary school, my parents just left me for him. He was working in Portacos. Mid-term break, I go to his house. My visit, my, 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 my gift, the day they were, the award days, they did not know who my mommy or daddy were. They were my mom and dad. But to think that such a relationship disintegrated to this point. Now, I, I had to write to my uncle. Oh, oh, that's that uncle is one of the ones who eventually. I'm telling you, yes. We lost contact with her. Okay. Yes, and that was, as in, as in, when he was building his house in Portacourt, I was about thirteen. I am the child. He called me aside. He said, "You're my sister's daughter." He showed me his plan. He showed me the architectural drawing. He said, "This is my plan." This uh, to tell you how close. My, my prize giving days, as I'm coming down from the stage, is his wife I'm taking my gifts to. Okay. So you can imagine the pain that growing up with his children and my older uncle's children, we all grew up together as a family unit, close, loving family unit. But okay, because I'm in real, no, I mean pain. I said, when I told you it's a deep topic, I know what I'm saying. So when people are doing things today, they're only thinking of today. They're not thinking of the far-reaching consequences of their actions. And it all boils down to pride and lack of humility. What is the big deal in reconciling with your sibling? What is the big deal? This is the same. This person came from the same womb as you. 
what is the big deal okay so you feel that so so what is it that you feel that no matter what i feel no matter what let there be peace let peace reign let there be love i'm a love being you know. i mean i love to love all right I, okay I, I love family i love togetherness i love family i love bonding all right coco can you take it from there please sorry if i came um, across as dream now sorry yeah that's fine um like she said um the pain but i think the difference between um Adri and myself is i don't feel pain anymore I, I tell you what if anything i feel extremely extremely em empowered i know it sounds a bit strange to say but sometimes it's the only way to move on really you know to feel really empowered and because you can't dwell in the pain especially if you know look if you're the aggressor you know you usually don't feel pain aggressors don't feel pain they're actually the ones that inflict it and that's the intent to inflict pain on the innocent sibling yes Adria, i do agree with you let peace reign there's no big deal quite frankly someone like me i'm quite willing to throw pride aside and all that but in the situation where you know you've done all You've done everything. You've laid down the pride because, um, as a matter of fact, you've got none. It's not a matter of pride because if you're the victim of sibling rivalry, um, the fault is definitely not yours. It is that of the perpetrators of, of um, the hate. But, you know, sometimes, just like you said, you're all about love. You love peace. You're a lovely person same here absolutely and when you love peace when you're a lovely person when you're that person that goes out of the way to please people and displease yourself um you would agree with me that you would have done a lot of overtures and let your siblings be them the older ones or the younger ones run you over all in the sake of peace but truth is it gets to that point after decades after over a decade after nearly a decade of trying to bridge this piece that you know listen i am making a fool out of myself at this point i am being laughed at because of the kind of heart that i have because you know you always be the first one to reach out and it gets to that point where they're actually making a caricature of you and i think it's at that point that you have to wake up and say to yourself you know what enough enough I've, I've prayed enough I've, I've you know done all the overtures i've sent all the emissaries bearing in mind that you are not the one at fault as in blameless and even where you are or partially are or you know you've done everything and if you see listen is is at that point you will agree with me that the you've got to come to the realization that whatever the problem is without going into any details of it that hang on it didn't actually start today you were thinking is actually this little tip that's what the issue is but when you look back especially with the utterances with the things they say about you you know probably directly to your face or through people that they know that are, that will come and tell you and you're like hang on did that really happen when we were young and well i can't remember when it happened oh no 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 that's not the way and you find yourself actually correcting impressions to these outsiders or insiders that are telling you and that's when you now know that whatever it is that you thought was the, the recent problem it, it it's got nothing to do with that recent problem it's got everything to do with all what they've had at the back of their minds against you so in a nutshell you know what you get to that point where you're like enough this is out of my hands and this has got nothing to do with me and like you said i hate it when it's passed down to the children um i'll take an extra minute or two to tell you the kind of person that i am in my mom's family um there were a lot of issues when i say issues not her immediate as in her siblings that story for another day but i'm talking about her and her uncle you know well there was a lot of money too much money in their family okay her father used to be one of the richest africans in their day that's big that i'm talking about money i don't want to talk about money in our accounts here you would actually marvel if you hear how much my grandfather was worth now um 
the brother, he put in a company. Well, as always, I'm just cutting the long story short. At some point, he felt I had rights over my brother's children because my mom at that time, she and her siblings were all very little, right? So he now goes on to have his own wife and children. And this is him now raising his children against my mother. Them, it, it, it's just a bit of a I bit think, mess I think, anyway. I think I but, missed. I missed the link there. Is, did anyone else? The link there is my grandfather's brother. Okay. Yes. At the time, my mom, they were young. She and her siblings had a brother who who brought him to the company and gave him some shares. Right. Okay. Are you getting me? You've missed so me. So your grandfather's brother brought some siblings in. No, no, no. Okay. My grandfather brought his younger brother uh -huh. into the business. Okay, okay, okay. So this is now him having his own kids, right? Right. I'm feeling we have a stake in this thing. Right. Whereas, come on, the business belongs to my grandfather. Naturally, after him should be his children, right? Right. But because he's brought in his brother. Right. And his brother thinks, oh, whoa, 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 whoa I've got a stake here. So right. when he started having his own children, who, by the way, were a lot younger than my mother and her siblings. Right. There was now a conflict. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. There was now a conflict of we need to grab, we have a stake. Mm -hmm. And it got so bad because my grandfather lost my grandmom. She died post-war and all that. So the wife that he got married to again after my late grandmom was actually put there, if that makes sense, was actually put there to protect certain interests. That's in, hmm, you're going to marry this really wealthy man, but you're protecting our interests. Does that make sense? More like implanted into the family. And anyway, cut long story short, let me just go into what a point I wanted to make. That rivalry between my mother's uncle and them trans, you know, transitioned into their children. Does that make okay. sense? Of course, yeah. So my mom's uncle now has his own children. My mom, her siblings now um, have their own children, as in she and her siblings. Of course. So this is now my generation, if that makes sense. Of course. My generation against their generation. Yes. Like, we're kind of like in the same age group. They're slightly older, though, but some are plus minus my age. Well, probably six years older than me. Then I know they have some that I'm probably about seven, eight years older than. Anyway, cut long story short. I was just trying to use this to illustrate the kind of person I am. I didn't want to get caught up with the family, whatever it was that was going on in the background. I didn't want to take sides as a teenager because I felt I want to know my cousins on the on Okay, she's frozen. And if I may, you know, while she's frozen, while we're waiting. Okay, continue. continue. I'm, no, I'm, I'm back. So what I did, and this is me. I found a way. I didn't have to reach out to my cousins because we ended up being in uni, the same university, right? It's safe to say that those my cousins and I are five and six even to today. Kudos. Yes. All right. Great one. Because he calls me. I know um, his son. I know he his pet name for me is Sweetheart. That's what he calls me, right? He calls me Sweetheart. When I went to Lagos before we built our own house, it was with his sister, Michael. And we were actually teasing about it. We okay, would say, we would say, we're supposed to see each other and use cutlasses to cut off our heads. But it's not like that. But That's then, also, final point to make here, it takes two to tango. If I'd reached out and they didn't reach out, actually, you would agree with me that it would have been like this. But it's just the fact that I believe that they have the same heart that I have. So when you... is reconciliation, you, bottom line. But you've got to have the same heart with that person. But if the person has a, a, a wicked heart, me reaching out, you know, like... You don't change a thing. You get my point. Hmm. Right, and then rounding no. up, a lot has to do with the parents. 
Okay, well, actually, let's uh, let's hear from. Uh, yes, and just to add, sorry, also just to add um, to what you said, actually, it has to do with the parents. My mother, I would imagine, was exactly the same person as I am because I tell you what, no, she no, has no. the power to break that relationship. She ha they used to come to our house and I used to go to oh, theirs. Mom could have said to me, I don't want to see those people in my house. Their father is responsible for this, for that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't something she was bothered about. Hello, Pastor. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yes, Very well. Uh, sibling ex estrangement, uh, sibling rivalry. Um... I really appreciate the testimonies that we are giving about uh, our own situations. Children, uh, rivalry between brothers and sisters is not new. It's as old as the world itself. As old as the Bible. Um, the first recorded murder case in the Bible was between two brothers. And one of the, one of the most uh when we when we see rivalry it usually comes most times from a dysfunctional family setting you had that in jacob <laughs> you had how his wives were fighting each other more or less to you know the envy you 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 see the the selfishness, the unforgiveness, and so on and so forth, you know. But why is there a breakdown of relationship among siblings or cousins or relations like that in that way? Why? Why does it happen in the first place? Why? And what do we do as, as people who, I speak as a believer, I speak as someone who, have, who has found a different way of living. You know, because you have things like pursue peace. You have blessed are the peacemakers. So what do we do? How do we handle? How do we deal with such things? I have a cousin who, who we do not see eye to eye. I have brother who he's just our brother who is just somebody else you know, how do we deal with something do we just give up do we just say no i've tried my best you know and um if there is anything i've always wanted to do is to make sure that in my own family we are one we are one we have grown up through the years um uh i'm from the polygamous home in the sense that we have we have we have different mothers you know and um we want to be one we want to i want to make sure that we are all together thinking alike you know and one of the things that makes that for me is because i have become a christian is because i have become a christian I, there was a point in my life I actually wanted to change my surname, you know. But when, when you have a different spirit, when you have a different heart, when you have a different, different principles of life that are guiding you, you begin to walk towards solution. How... Like the scripture says in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is for brethren, that is siblings, brothers, people who are from the same lineage, how good it is for them to dwell together in unity. It's one of the most beautiful things. But the, when sibling rivalry comes in, it's one of the worst kind of divisions you can ever think of. Why it is like that, I have not been able to fathom it yet. You can fight with a friend, you know, and it is easier to come back and cement that relationship and bring it back again. But when it is a brother, a sister, a cousin, 
until today, I don't understand why it is more difficult, <laughs> you know, to bring no, it back. I think it's, it's because you actually, you, you, you expect more. People, exactly. I think you have higher because expectations. Because of the love bond, the pain is deeper. The betrayal is deep. It's, yeah, the betrayal, the feeling of betrayal, yes. You are right. Like this person, you are right. this person, yes. You are right. From someone the that people that hurt you the most are the people you love the most. Yeah, that's where the pain is the most. Yes. The people that hurt you the most are the people you love the most. Mm. You know. And we must know that, first of all, it is possible. But what are the causes of these things? I think we should be able to look at the causes of these things. Why does it happen? Uh, you know, I had mentioned one thing, um, dysfunctional families. Things are not just right. You don't just have cases where you don't just have a guide, a father who is there, a mother who is there. And then you have cases of favoritism. There is a particular child that loves or mom, mom loves and she shows it. She shows it. She, she doesn't... They don't hide it. Those things come bring for bring things up like envy, hmm. envy, um, hatred, and they can run deep when they are siblings. They can really run run deep. Envy is a powerful emotion that can ruin relationships as easily as you can ever think of another thing is as you mentioned pride pride is one of the things that really deals with us here you know who does he think he is i'm older than he is you know you know we have we 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 give a lot of premium to age. I'm older than you. You are older than me, and things like that. And um, we wonder why. Yes, it it brings structure, but it can also bring damage when we don't respect one another, when we don't love one another as we really should. Does anyone? Sibling rival. Sorry. Sorry, sorry for that interruption. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, please. So it, it's when we don't love each other as we really should. There is one proverb, a one saying I, I got um, many years ago. It said, 40 friends don't stay friends for 40 years. You know? And... But those are friends. Different things will set us apart. Disagreements that are unresolved. Um, when we don't confront issues as they should. Um, people are afraid to confront issues. You will win a friend better by confronting or a sibling better by confronting and solving problems. Say it louder for the ones in the back. Say it louder for the ones in the back. <laughs> you, you will do better confronting issues and dealing with them amicably with respect, you know, than allowing them to fester. No problem solves on its own. No problem solved on its own. Yeah. I'd like you to, want to say something? Yes. I am thinking that maybe we want to ask some direct questions now because I yeah. think that we can list all the different things that lead to sibling rivalry. But we know, yes. first of all, probably it starts with communication in whether or yes. not it continues. And I'm sure that those who really want it would have made an effort. Now, what if we make that effort and that person or those people are unwilling to meet us halfway or they continue to hold on to... Uh, halfway. Yes, into, onto their accusations of us. 
and then we say i am sorry i'm sorry about what happened or no i didn't mean it that way and after that conversation it continues what then you're not responsible for people's reactions you are not responsible for how people respond to you you're not responsible for what people think about you. Hmm. You are responsible to God for what he has commanded you to do. He says, pursue peace with all men as much as lies within you. So can we say, can we say, because for those who say that no matter what, you have to be at peace with, how do how do we because i feel like I, I would explain to the person if i found myself in that in those shoes i would say i've tried my best person says what, so what the bible is what the bible is saying to us is that there is possibility that you cannot make peace mm -hmm. that's why it says as much as lies within you mm -hmm. there is a possibility. You? you're shaking your head okay Please. oh okay speak please. i feel i feel if god said as much as is within your power live at peace with all men that means god knows it's possible to live at peace with all men but you just you just said if if he says as much as is within your power so when it's not within your power that's what we're saying or what's or how make, do i misunderstand you how do you do it then <sighs> Except the other person's heart is made of stone. I think that that's is it. the point. <laughs> yes, yeah, so how do you do that it is then? The point. They have that, that is, is, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. You are responsible to pursue peace. But you are not responsible when somebody says, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You're not responsible for that. Yeah. You have obeyed God to the extent and you have done it out of a sense that I need to make peace. Because he said, blessed are the peacemakers. You know? Blessed are the peacemakers. You know, blessed are the peacemakers. You are not just there. You're not just, you are looking at everything around you and say, no, this relationship, let's try and rebuild it. That, that family... Let's try and come back together. Um, my brothers and my sisters, let us, what can we do to um, come back together? To reunite. To reunite, that's a good word. The point is, how you do it is important. Huh. How you do it is important. You know, I normally say, I normally say, when you are telling truth, how you say the truth is as important as the truth you are saying. Beautiful. You know, you can't just say, I've told him after all. How did this, why did you, how did you carry, you know, communication is, is not just saying words. It's an attitude, plus the words, plus our intonation. I can actually be saying, eh, well, I love you. I, I love you. I, I love you. You know I love you, don't you? You're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not carrying out the attitude. The body language is not giving what you want to, to carry across. Yeah. But is it, um, I, is, isn't it almost a given? Isn't it a given that somebody who really wants to have peace with their sibling would actually know how to adjust their approach to it because if i if, if it's something that i'm really keen about if i try it and it hasn't worked i will go back and reflect on it and think about how best can i approach my sister or my brother now to make sure that i convey this this my wish my desire for us to be close so anybody who genuinely really wants it would naturally go back and we strategize do their best Yes, so you, it's a continuous see, process. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me come in here. Um, I'm not saying that the person I, I don't will know. It. If I'm I don't know. 
I don't know if anyone has had a personal experience of a sibling rivalry scenario, or are you just um, sibling battle scenario? Mm. <laughs> have you? But I haven't. I you have haven't, um, uh, Pastor. Have you had the? Have I'm just thinking. Perhaps um, what you were trying to, when you asked that question, you were, what you were trying to address was the idea that anybody who really wants it would have would give their best to it is that what you're trying to address yes i was trying to address the point you see you you need to be a, a victim of it perhaps an aggressor but at least a, a victim to actually understand it you know there's a, a difference between reading something in the book being a world expert at something and having the experience of it when That's you have right. an experience of it you could you, you're a lot better you're in a much better better position to explain that thing than someone that has a doctorate degree. Yeah, it, makes sense. Or there's a professor in there. Can I can I can I come in on that? Um, the answer to your question, your, okay. answer to your question for me is yes. But I would also like to say, personal experience may not necessarily always be put you in a position to explain an experience because sometimes our experiences actually confuse us and it is when it is when we are able to learn about such experiences that we now understand our experience Sometimes we may have experiences and we don't know why and we may not have handled it properly. And those experiences have actually torn us apart. And as they say, those who are hurt, hurt others more easily than those who have not been hurt. We need to be careful to understand that we can find solutions in God's word. When I had a divorce or when I had intense marriage issues, I knew I was having them. But I, I didn't, if I wanted to explain that based on my experience, I could mislead a lot of people. Because my experience, I would only be able to, I would only see it from my perspective. I only see it from what I went through. Your own peculiar situation. Yes, my situation. So I wrote in one of my books, I said I was careful to study God's word to deal with a particular situation which I have experienced. And I wanted to make sure that I saw it in the light of God. I didn't want my experience to color my understanding. I didn't want it to make me to use it. I didn't want to use it to interpret God's word. I needed to allow God's word to interpret my experience. If I didn't do it that way, I would become a biased counselor. I have experienced it, but I am not able to help others effectively because my experience is in the way. In fact, my hurt will actually be in the way, you know. Yes, it is true. Like you say, Coco says, when we have had an experience, God can use that experience to help others. In fact, he does use such an experience to help others. That is why when we fall the bible says when we enter into a temptation god comforts us he said he will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able but he will with that temptation make a way of escape he will comfort us so that the comfort with which he has comforted us we will be able to use to comfort others it is not our experience we will use to comfort others but the comfort god has given us that we use to comfort us. And when we have that understanding, it becomes a, a, chain, a chain of being a blessing to other people 
So you are in a better position. Actually, you are in a very good position to help others when you have gone through an experience. But you cannot use that experience as the understanding to bless others. You need to have something beyond you to be able to deal with it. Yes, you might empathize better. You will actually empathize better when you have actually gone through it and come out of it effectively. If you have not done that, you will become a miserable comforter even though you have gone through that experience. We must temper our experiences as believers with God's word. With the temperaments that he has given us through the spirit. That's why we have the spirit of the living God. If we don't temper our experiences, like I said, we'll become miserable comforters. We want to be a blessing to others, but we, we okay. cannot be. Well, we have gone through it, but we will not be. The way that I would ask this question is this now. So because we have different religions, people believe in different things. We have Buddhists, people who have, we grew up with uh, Christianity being around us. What if we had grown up in Buddhism? So what if somebody comes to you who grew up with Buddhism and somebody who grew up with um, Hindu, I, Hinduism, I do worship, or, or, or whatever else it is. Would you not? How will I approach? Would you not extend? Yes. Would you not extend the grace of help to that person? So, so how definitely. Are, that, that, yes. That's why I'm here. Hmm. Definitely, you know. Definitely, you see the power or the experience of of being able to go through something with the help of God. If you're a Christian, God has helped you. Now, if somebody, I have had people come to me, I've, I've counseled with uh, people that are not Christians, you know, and it has been effective. I have counseled with Christians who do not even believe what they are supposed to believe, you know, you know, so yeah, you are able to deal with people because humans are humans. Whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Buddhist or a Shintoist or a Muslim, we go through the same experiences. We have the same, we are all humans. But, so have I, have a mm -hmm. but I have a solution. And that solution is, this is what God has done for me based on what I believe. I can't shy away from it. I, I cannot shy away because it is the truth and it works. It worked for me. I offer it to you. You have a choice to receive it. I offer it to you because out of a good heart, I want to be a blessing to you. I want you to come out of what you are in. I'm giving you the privilege of understanding that this thing that you are going through, I have somebody that can help you. What you're looking for is a solution. You're not looking for a religion. You're looking for a solution. I'm not going to offer you a religion. I'm going to offer someone that can step into your life. You know, we have actually bastardized the Christian faith. It is funny when I hear things, I don't want to walk in a place where people are unbelievers. No, no, you, you, are, you are supposed to be there as light. That's the place you should desire to walk. Okay. You, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, Coco, do you want to go on with that um, line of thought that we were starting on at that time? Let me see. Um, the, the, well, uh, there's no right or wrong tone to it, but it's just for us to be aware that there's some people that are not Christians. And, um, you know, just like we said, we have Muslims, we have Christians, we have those that believe in Buddhism, we have Sikhs, we have atheists, we have only God knows how many religions. So we, we've got there are millions of them. <laughs> yes. So we, God is love. 
you know, and I do believe that in all religions, whatever it is that they worship, they will also tell you that, it, you know, it actually professes love as well. So whatever the reference point of anyone is, the point is this, when it comes to sibling rivalry, I know why I asked the question if, if you had a personal experience and experience with it. Yes. we felt, I don't want to invalidate your own experiences, but I have to say when I said that I was specifically referring to a same mother, same father, why, why, why am I saying this? And this is not to invalidate your own experiences. You see, stereotypically at least, and I do believe that to be the case, at least in most cases, in most polygamous setups, you know, there's always a rivalry is part of it. I mean, you can't take it away. I am yet to have a friend or hear of people that were born from, you know, in a polygamous setting that they will say, oh, me and my other sister were five and six. Even if they are today or tomorrow, my goodness. It, it, no, it is true. That is fact. So, like I said, not to invalidate your own experiences, but, you know, um, I think if you'd said, you know, yes, I've had that experience between myself and siblings from my own mom, that would be a lot more specific to this topic and i'm not saying that to invalidate your experiences at all i can't say that enough be because um the one that is let's just use the word as expected but the one that is most shocking is almost like natural for that to happen but the one that is most you know um crucial here is in a monogamous setup or even in a polygamous setup you having that rivalry with your own same mother, Siblings. same father, sibling, not half sister, not half brother, you know, and, 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 and that's a kind of sibling rivalry. If, if I'm to, you know, uh, say that is most unnatural because people from the same moms, they're supposed to bond, you know, not necessarily from the same father, but from the same mother because there's 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 something i mean i have friends that their moms have gone on to remarry and the siblings from that mom they remained like this and they actually antagonized their siblings from another father because that man is not their dad that's their mom's husband the way they look at it so the children okay. born uh, already the, 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 there's some sort of rivalry, so it's not that one. Anyway, the reason why I ask that question is, if you have that exper personal experience, you would know, I, I'm talking about same mother, same father, that especially if you're a very nice person, that you would have tried everything. And when you have, you, you get to that point where you just say, do you know what? The problem is not with me. Because if you look at the history, you go back to the Genesis, you would actually, like I was trying to say before, you actually find that, that hang on, just like Kaji was saying, that's a favorite. You're already being branded the favorite child. And in most cases, this so-called child that is being branded the favorite, it is, it's, it's got nothing to do with what she'd ever done. Or in most cases, she doesn't even know you know and even if she does know in most cases that child is still respectful of her elder or his elder siblings that are even hating on him or her some kids some young kids would actually take advantage of that love to actually you know say mean things to their siblings because they know they're the favorite I child bet. but some children are actually that smart that they don't even want any of that so it's not something they encourage and it's not something they take advantage of either. Now, and that is where I have a problem. If you know you have that sibling that doesn't take advantage of the fact that the parents so-called favor her, why are you hating on that sibling? Just like Ajiri said, no fault of hers. It's a different thing if that sibling takes advantage to, you know, her mouth where you guys are, it's just, you know, runs and stuff. But that child is blameless. And that so, child still grows up to go through hell at you people's hands. So look at this situation. For as long as that child can remember, five, six years, four years, 
she's been going through or he has been going through that torment at the hands of his or her siblings right and you're now in your 40s or late 30s or whatever age when your parents pass away and everyone now turns on you full force because the way they look at it oh, your our parents that used to protect you they're no longer here now we're going to show you how much we hate you so when such a thing happens what do you do you do everything you can god loves the peacemakers now when you when you're absolutely sure from deep down here that you've done everything and i mean everything is everything what do you do you can't keep trying you can't keep trying because you should at one point you know like, like i said making a fool out of yourself really you know so if there's siblings out there that are going through this sort of thing listen if you know you have done your absolute best and this is the you know I, I'm, I'm a victim of I, I don't need to go into my own personal history but i'm one of those siblings right that's it you've done everything enjoy your life really quite frankly if not it's now a matter of you allowing your happiness your mood to be detected by other people and that's exactly what they want they they're now controlling here so it's got to get to that point and all you have to do quite frankly is just to pray for god to touch their heart and that prayer shouldn't take over your life you pray as long as you feel listen that's it all my prayers are now channeled towards me my children my my my, my myself there's nothing you can do about it just know that it's got nothing to do with you but everything to do with them but if you know you have a hand in it i think you should you know continue to reach out to tell your own side of the story but more often than none just like Ajiri said it didn't start from that in your 40s when it now manifests it is a matter of um okay i tell you what if also and i if i've always loved Ozo as a friend never had any issues with her if also does something that shocks me and comes to explain okay fine she's at fault granted but if she comes to me to explain herself you know um, with all the whatever she has to tell me i am far more likely to forgive her and will forge her as uh, friends but if i've always been envious of also we met in law school but let me just say we were in primary together okay for as long as we've been in primary that's dating back when we were five six seven years and we're in our 50s now if i've always hated ozo because ozo has something that i think i should have had whatever that is if also should do the same thing or even a lesser offense to me we're now in our 50s i'll just hold on to it because i've now found that reason to sever i've always wanted to and I'll now that use use that opportunity to tell us of things that would shock her because she wouldn't have known that I bore these grudges. Obviously, when I speak to her in that manner, this is all just Uzo. Let me say Uzo is 60. You're not Uzo. But let's just say she's 60. Do you know how much it will hurt her? Because then she realized that I've been friends with Coco since age five. It means she's know, been harboring these what? things. Yeah. So what happens if Uzo is sensible enough? Uzo will just run. Uzo will run because the kind of things that I would have spilt out okay, against that's her. That's a good one. The kind of things that I would have spilt. Uzo should be wondering. Hang on, is it just this issue that has brought up all these things from like when we were little? Me telling her, "Aha, the teachers always favoured you." This, that, 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 that. She not even knowing you know so so th there's there's a there's a lot you know uh, yeah i'm not here to break up siblings or you know but then my i'm talking about experience here, they, are, just, they are broken up already <laughs> yeah, 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 the point i'm making is there are actually some people i'm of the view that there are actually some people i know god doesn't destined for us to be like that but i believe that pending when god will walk on them they're toxic to you the relationship is toxic quite frankly pending when god will touch them okay there's nothing possible for him to do but i don't want us to be delicious to be delusional 
and take that energy that we're supposed to use to pray for ourselves and pray for these people permanently look if it's god's will it'll be mended and if it's not focus on yourself use that energy and focus on yourself that's all i have to say and mm. talking and I oh, must Andrew, you are, you are and muted. I'm, I'm not muted we I'm can help but you're a bit low okay i must have can you okay let me um we can hear you we can hear you okay i must emphasize that parents have a big role to play in determining mm. if they're feeling rivalry or not and i will start i will just use the case of the mother in the bible who set up her older son and the younger son against each other esau and jacob now because she felt that god had revealed to her that the younger child would lord it over the older child or that god had revealed to her that he preferred the younger child to the older child she tried to help god now what business does a mother have setting up her children against each other why will you tell jacob oh your father wants to bless your elder brother but I want that blessing to come to you. So come, I will cook your father's favorite meal. Hmm? Then I, then Jacob, Jacob even told her about mommy. I'm not the same as my brother. My skin. She said, don't worry, I will handle it. Now she puts hair on his body. That is a manipulative bad mother. And we must call what about out, those who don't we, do it. We then? must call out parents. No, we must call out parents who show favoritism. We must call out mothers and fathers who show favoritism. No matter how much deep in your heart as a parent, you know deep in your heart that you really don't dig one of your children and you're really all over one of the other child. Or well, the that other sounds child. odd. It's not odd. It happens. So, let me that's you. sick, you know. You that's may, really you sick. Know. You may love, that is really sick. Yeah. But you, you, know, some, some, you may love all your children, but there may just be a particular child that gets on your nerves that you really, really do not like. There's a difference between I love all of you, but I don't really like your character. I don't really like how you respond to me. I don't like how saucy and rude you are. Do not show it. I'm begging you. As a mother, as a father, I'm begging and there seems to be a tendency for fathers to have a soft spot for their daughters and be hard on their sons. I know as a man, you want to train your son to become a man, to become responsible. But please do not spoil your daughter. And in your son's face, you are doing everything for that girl giving her everything she asks for and when no, your no, son no. Asks, when your son asks for the same thing you tell him he's a man he should go and sort himself out it is not right i'm also calling out fathers and as much as i'm calling out mothers let us learn to be fair as parents and deal with all our children on the same basis i think what one you of do for what you do for one do for the other hmm. please if you know you do not have the capacity financially to do for all of them then don't do at all okay that's nice Ajiri. thank you very much one of the things that i've seen that creates an issue also is the idea giving from especially from our culture this one is older so every time this one says something everybody you have to toe the line because because we're human beings oops, power corrupts sometimes a person will take that upon themselves and you know we grow up with that idea that when i say something my word is my word is uh, binding on everyone but by the time we get to adulthood your word cannot be binding on other adults who have responsibilities and a life to live so we we have to get to a place where we what we now have to do is discussions we don't just now come and say to our younger ones because we are older than them this is how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to now have communication and a discussion. And then you give even those younger ones an opportunity to speak their own 
thoughts as well because now they are grown adults with ideas but when some of us forget this and even in adulthood i will speak to my siblings who are married with their own children and families i want to dictate to them what to do and when they don't toe the line i am upset i get upset and then i allow there to be a wall between us because they're now not towing the line this is just something that we're doing as children when we get to adulthood all this has to stop because some people are living like this now and feeling that they don't listen to me when I say, they cannot listen to you. I cannot listen to you when you speak to me. Even, even as my parents, my parents cannot call me and tell me what to do as an adult when I have a life and responsibilities. So some of us need to remember that. And please, Ada's first daughters, stop trying to control the whole family. Please. <laughs> yes. I'm not one. It is a I'm not one. One, but I just have to say it. It is both, a both, major wahala. All the women and the men, eh? Okwara or Ada, whichever one. Okay, okay. I think the men are the Okwaras and the... I think, but but yes. I, I, it's particularly bad among the first. Anyone? <laughs> right. I... So, Stop thinking they must tow your line. They must do what you say. They must do what... They have their own homes. They have their own families. They are individuals. You cannot control your siblings in their respective families. Or in their respect... Even if they don't have families. As long so as they are so, adults. Yeah, as long so as they are adults, you can't control them. Uh, to me, for me, everything about life and dealing with another human being is, first of all, we're on... We're, not, we're on a level playing field, so everybody's everybody is important. So that's where I, I start everything from. So when we have a disagreement, I am not trying to have my my own voice heard, and I am not going to give you the chance to let your voice be the one to be heard. It is going to be both of us because I believe in the principle of love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. That's for Christians. Even if you're not a Christian, I believe that that's the best way that we can resolve things in life. So when I come to a place where I have an issue with a sibling and I've gone out of my way for us to, to be able to reunite and I do my best, I, I, I always believe that even God knows that I have done my best. When I do my best, I've done my best. And I will not allow anybody to place any guilt on me. And I will not place any guilt on anybody. To tell them that God wants us to always be at peace. And so when you have done your best, you need to continue to hit your head against the wall to try to make this thing work because as we know we cannot control another person's thoughts and some of us are sick some of some of our siblings are actually those people who those assassins those people who are armed robbers and who rape people when they go to steal those are other people's siblings they're somebody's brother and sister so my own siblings are not necessarily going to be angels just because they're my siblings what if i have one of those people one of those demons as my brother or sister there is no amount of talking that i'm going to do to get through to somebody who already has is not normal. Oh, 